Hey everyone, this is Abby from AV Tarot Reading, and I have a new set of cards that I'm super excited to finally be able to hold. Um, so this is the second edition of the um, El Goliath Tarot. And it's an indie tarot deck that is very heavy animal uh, themed and all pencil drawings. And the original version that was produced um, um, a bit ago had some details to it that I wasn't really attracted to and I felt cumbersome with um, on the one set that I actually was able to hold and have for a little while. But this set is supposed to be a modified and, and improved version. So I am thrilled. I immediately snatched on site. We waited until um, all of the details and it was fulfilled and the things and the things and the stuff and stuff. So this came two days ago and I wanted to take this opportunity in my treehouse <laughs> to, um, to, to dig in and to show you and show myself and to get acquainted. And um, I don't think I'll be able to do it tonight, but I do want to do like an interview and do a, a deck interview live. That'd be kind of cool to just share that with everyone. So I'm gonna make this kind of ritualistic for myself because it's fun to do so. I have a touch of Palo Santo. And it's a Palo Santo, um, what do you call it, like incense blend um, or ground up into a stick. So, um, yeah, it's just to me, it makes it a little more special. But let me light a candle because to me, no working is complete. No work is complete without a candle being lit. Like, I don't even like coming in here without a candle being lit. Like, honestly, every time I come in here, this is the first thing I want to do is light some fire. And that to me is just that kind of announces to the space to me, I'm here, <laughs> I'm ready to work with you, I'm ready to work with the space, thank you so much for allowing me to be here kind of thing. So I'm going to put my little fire off to the side so I don't burn anything, light my little Palo Santo wand. It is kind of a Palo Santo wand, isn't it? In just a moment, lighting now, there we go. And there's something that's just amazing about that fragrance, that smell. It's just kind of like a, I want to bless this moment. I want to enjoy the contents of this box and our time together and kind of also like shift the energy of anyone who has been working with this box <laughs> since um, before it arrived here. Anyone who was working with the packaging, it just kind of, thank you. I appreciate all of you done. But now it's for me. <laughs> now this is for me. And I know we all have our own little procedures and our processes, but um, I make mine as I go. Um, as of right now, I'm loving um, doing the star and then a circle. And then for whatever reasons, three kind of like circular points um, to the center of the, the, I guess, graphic or whatever you want to call it, um, helps me kind of feel connected and together. And I want to put out my Palo Santo and light a touch of incense. There you go. And the incense is just because I love the smell of smell goods. There you go. And I've been um, practicing making my own. And I will um, get my own made eventually. But till then, I get to use other people. So thank you, all you other people who make incenses and have wonderful things that I get to work with. So I made my own working oil. To me, it's just like, whenever I want to be proud of something that I do, <laughs> I have my super tiny touch of um, Abby made working oil and it just makes me proud. It makes me happy and the joy just exudes. And uh, again, when you, when you make your own tools, you can't help but be a little super excited when you get to use them. At least an Abby does. All right, shall we dig in? <laughs> so from what I understand, I know y'all said y'all put these little stickers on here. Y'all know, y'all should know by now, ain't no shipping company give a shit about this sticker. <laughs> Thank you though, the consideration is lovely. So I haven't, I've just untaped it, but I haven't opened it yet. So I don't even know what's in here. So this is literally how the box came. So this is my new experience. There's my billing stuff. I'm hiding just so that my address isn't for everyone. And this is just the packing slip, I believe. Shipping type is best rate economy. 
to return this set please ship to returns department such and such okay that's fine i don't feel the need i probably would sell it before i would try to return it um but i'm going to save that just in case put that over there i don't have shelving or anything in my land yet um so anybody okay so i sell tarot cards online that's part of my business i believe that the unboxing experience is in itself a gift and is an experience that talks a bit about how you consider your work. Um, it's an extension of the work. So I guess it may be a slight design critique is that more consideration and thought into this process here. Cause this box feels pummeled. It feels like a little bit of an afterthought. And I totally understand it. You know, when you have a fulfillment company, you just want it to get there safely. <laughs> I get it. But then there's this extra bit of finesse there's this extra bit of love that occurs when you give it give this process a little bit love you know maybe like uh big ideas uh wrapping tissue rub wrapping paper make this kind of a gift make maybe some little added details maybe securely packaged instead of slid package in here just some ideas just some ideas only because i think about it all Sorry, I just realized I disconnected. Anyway, I think about it all the time in relation to um, my work. So, <laughs> okay, I'm super excited. Let me see how I can get into this. So, let's write it set up and then wrapped in bubble wrap. Thank you. Um, I find bubble wrap to be unattractive to look at. Like, I personally prefer, if I'm going to um, pack a set of cards, I'm going to use foam. Um, foam sheets would be ideal because it's just a more uniform like we we think of bubble wrap like I don't know like electronics I think so it, it just doesn't have the the keeping of the sacred kind of feel to it <laughs> so I'm just I mean yeah that's just me these are personal preferences again my end result or my my main concern is that the end result is great that's all that matters honestly the extra details are extra details for bonuses. They make things extra and amazing. Um, if you want to know design information um, or design tidbit for anybody who does uh, deck creation like this, when it comes to noise, um, packaging that makes noise has a psychological, psychological perception of um, cheapness. So if you're looking for luxury or if you're looking for a higher price point, silent packaging is ideal. So that means more lush materials, more silent fabrics, things like that. But like that sound is stuff that usually we immediately associate with something that's inexpensive. And that is from an industrial designer who used to design <laughs> packaging. Um, so it is sealed in plastic. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it, but this is the back. That's kind of interesting. I've, um, I was so distracted by the condition of the previous cards that I had, which was not the, um, the artist's fault. This was a used set that came into my possession through my, um, practice and my work that I really didn't get the opportunity to give this a whole lot of consideration and thought. So I love that this is my set. This is for me. This is my personal collection and I can't wait to dig in. So let's see. See how I can get in here. <laughs> I did not bring a sharp object. Do I have a sharp object? No, I'm still working on um, building this space. Actually, I had meant to. Oh, geez. I had meant to um, bring measuring tape so I can take measurements and start planning out uh, <laughs> this furniture and space design and what have you. I am not going to get this open. Let me grab my keys. See if I can. Oops. Well, if I don't stop kicking the tripods, I will figure this out, you all. Oh, here's a thumbtack in the wall. Just kidding. Okay, are we still recording? We are still recording. Good, because I accidentally disconnected a moment ago. So this will be fun to see if um, the first portion of this video uh, even recorded. <laughs> That'll be so disappointing. I love, I love, I love moments like this, because these are things you can't get back. You can't pretend to be excited again. You can try, but it doesn't work the same. You know, I'm trying to be super focused here and less cognizant of the camera. So I finally got the plastic off, and I'll put that away in a moment. Okay. I'm all right with that whole little glossy texture. So this is great for a bookshelf. Um, hmm. how, do I, how does this open? <laughs> I 
Okay, so it's a nesting box, got it. Okay, so it just takes a second to kind of get some air between the seams. There we go. Nesting box. Elgoliath Tarot Deck, second edition. Written and illustrated by Goliath. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Um, I don't spend a lot of time. This is just me being, you know, a brat. Um, I make it halfway through guidebooks. <laughs> I always have the best intention to read guidebooks. Um, but I am not always the best at it. Um, I know that one of my critiques just personally last time was that good god this was a wall of words and i'm wondering if it's still kind of a wall of words it's a little bit better than before it's legible last time it really wasn't it's it's a little bit better it's still a lot of text and what I find just as a designer, as a graphic designer, as a product designer, as a industrial designer, people don't read walls of words. People read con um, contrast and varying line weights. So like, I love that that's a different font. Excuse me. That is a different typeface than um, this, but I'm, I'm missing maybe some bolds or some different texts or different, you know, it's just like I have... I don't know. I mean, just that's just a graphic designer in me, just like me. I'm not exactly a fan of it all being italicized, but that's again just an Abbey. Ooh, I do like that they have keywords here. This feels interesting. I don't know. I'm kind of ambivalent about this. I'm not exactly the biggest fan on the guidebook, but you know, if I had to, um, if I was on a flight. <laughs> If I was on a flight somewhere, like maybe home to Arkansas, because it's a four-hour flight for me, um, I would read this. But you see, it's like that's when, and then I'd probably fall asleep because reading, if I'm not like intensely, immensely engaged and entertained by it, then I just pass out. I do love this flocking though. That's that's a nice little exper experience to have. What is this? This is, I'm assuming these are just the parts of the deck. Ooh, two halves. Look forward to feeling how these feel. So they're both plastic wrapped. It's to be expected, I guess. Actually, I wouldn't know. Ooh, okay. I see where your money went. <laughs> um, you, your money went into the packaging. I get it. I love that this is, what, probably die cut, I think. And then flocked with a... Uh, Velvet, velveteen or whatever the, the term is. I know it's flocking, but I don't know if that's literally like velvet now or something. Anyway, that makes a really, really nice, um, stable living surface for the cards. So that's, that's enjoyable. That's enjoyable. All right. So I got both, um, sets. I like that the cards are reversible. That's kind of fun. Um, some days I read reversal, some days I don't. So let's see if I can get in here without damaging anything. Would you like to see me do some surgery? Let's see. There we go. So I'm just trying to cut through the plastic. See, um, again, when it comes to luxury, I guess maybe that's the thing. Um, this wasn't really portrayed as a luxury deck. But the deck does command a higher price, which, you know, ultimately it's, it's all about whatever works. Honestly, um, I have experience, I have wisdoms, but if the alternative works, then fuck it, it works <laughs> and there's no like questioning it. Um, but if I was looking for a higher price point, things that I would omit is like plastic wrapping. Um, yeah, that's definitely something I would. I would admit. I like that the edges feel dry because sometimes, you know, cards that have been freshly edged have that tacky feel to them for a while. It takes like almost a week or two before it kind of solidifies. So I love that that is dry. I love just the immediate feel. Um, it feels like they'd be easy to shuffle. I appreciate that. While I love, I love me some matte texture um, on cards. Um, they are a bitch to shuffle <laughs> and I love them and I will still shuffle them and I will still fuss with them and I will still fight with them. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can open the other one without damaging anything. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to stay in frame. There we go. 
But yeah, if you're commanding a higher price point, it'd be a good idea just to skip that. Paper is great. Fabric is even better. The more luxurious, the better. And there is a lot of ways to get lux luxury on the cheap. So if you're worried about price point and then profitability, ooh, honey, we can talk numbers. <laughs> so I'm, ex I'm excited. Um, one that... There was like some fonts on the side that kind of was hard to read. And then I believe there was in like an Arabic uh, language on the other side. And it just didn't have a purpose. It didn't have a point to me um, when we were focusing on the card itself. So I guess this is like another detail that I'm just like meh about is that some borders are black and some borders are white. I bet you anything if I read the book, I would totally know why <laughs> it's set that way. But, you know, to each their own, to each their own. This is their deck. They did the work. They can they can do it the way that they want to. I get to be a brat. So um, I'm, I'm again. I'm liking this overall immediate feel. I like this overall immediate feel. I like that there's some flex to them, so they're not completely rigid. Um, I do have a, an affinity for thicker cardstock, but I totally get how this flexibility makes shuffling just kind of fun instead of like laborious um so i get it because like my light sears tarot my indie deck is um, a super thick card stock and you have to hand over hand it because you can't uh, rifle shuffle it at all but i can rifle shuffle my um what do you call it my dark mansion and it's a luxurious card stock with the matte texture and it shuffles like rifle shuffles like a dream <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of nice Ooh, i like that it shuffles pretty well sideways too or it um flexes pretty well sideways all right, so I'm going to do like a brief, maybe look through just to kind of get an idea. Oh, I get to put them all together. I like that they're all pretty well, because sometimes you can see like, oh, that's one half of the deck. That's the other half. So you can you can see a little bit. And I don't even know if it matters. Like, there you go. You can kind of see. And who gives a shit? Like, these are still really good cards. <laughs> now, I understand if like half your card is torn off, you'd be pissed. But like, this isn't so bad. It's not bad at all. It's not even a critique on, on card cutting. Like, this is just, I appreciate that this came in two pairs and they've they've flexed and relaxed in pairs. So as we shuffle, they'll, they'll all go together. Um, but anywho, I did want to look through them because so often I don't take that time to look through the set. Like, even my Dark Mansion Tarot, I'm still taking time to look through the set. So my understanding is that this is a completely... Um, black and white or gray essentially this is a complete graphite set um and it's all animal themes and i just kind of look forward to getting to know it like i'm definitely going to maybe incorporate it into my daily pulls so that i can get to know this set in particular the magician so i enjoy this i i like the magician the alchemical 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 oh anyway master and I think the only nuance that I'd be like meh about is that teeny weeny little weeny. Like really, really. I get it. I mean, you gotta have people do social media for days. You gotta have um your who you are. So I get it. It's just I, you know I'm a weirdo. Um, I love this. <laughs> I'm so in love with Egyptian themes right now. I love this. That makes me. Joyous and happy. I may have to take a picture of that later. Crescent moon cat. Is that a sphinx? Not a sphinx. What's that cat anyway? Let me not embarrass myself. Oh, interesting. Okay. I get it. Oh, I see. Is that literally how it works? So question. Now, I know birds lay eggs. This is a peacock. Does peacocks lay eggs? Like, would a full little chick be, maybe that's not the point. I don't know. I'll have to, like, consider this. Because <laughs> sometimes when cards are just, like, that science doesn't make sense. That that gets a little bothersome for me, and I have a hard time connecting to it because the, the disconnect is there. It's like I'm too having too much of a hard time being bitter about it. The emperor. Let me make sure I'm in the frame. The ruling father. I like that. The Hierophant, the Master of Keys. That's an odd, that's an interesting, this looks like the back of something, the Hierophant. Ooh. See, it's just this, this set, you can't, 
just look at it. You have to like invest in the details of it. You have to look past the surface. And I appreciate artwork that is more than just the obvious. Like there's a little detail in the back there. I'm sure it's obvious to some people, but sometimes it's not. These little beads, like you have to look past the obvious. The Chariot of Osiris. Oh my gosh, does this have Egyptian themes to it? You're going to be a deck after my own heart. Justice, the Doves of Equality. Ooh, look at the scales. Hmm. Hermit. The Fortune. Great Wheel. Whoa. That is interesting. The lion and the cobra. They could fuck each other up. <laughs> that's the thing. They could mess each other up. Huh, that's an interesting point of view for strength. I mean, see, the, the, when I um, read cards, I try to read that deck. Because the strength card has meaning based on the rider weight system and if, it almost feels rude <laughs> to impose that system on this card so i rather let this card tell me what it what its meaning is so instead of strength being kind of like a mutual cooperation of beasts i could be like this in that moment or in that question something like i don't know maybe i have power over fuckery situations or even when things are massive or hard to deal with I still have um a hidden weapon <laughs> like there's a million reasons a million, million things that can come out of that card but that's I love how dynamic and mature this set feels so I appreciate that and good god is that a great image no like specifically the eyes have kind of like pulled me in so that's pretty 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 good I have that tattoo on my back. It's not quite a tramp stamp. It's a little bit above that, actually. It's like a, it's an upper mid back stamp. <laughs> Aye. So I'm assuming like that's a crow, I think. This is the death moth. If, if I remember correctly, that's like the silence of the lambs moth, right? You'll have to totally let me know. Metamorphic moth. I'm going to have to like rewatch that movie and see if I can get the, uh, the technical name. Cause I remember it had that too. Temperance. Ooh, I love that these are koi fish. That brings me joy seeing that. This is an odd image to me, and it's always been odd. And maybe that's the point. Is it supposed to freak you out a little bit? It's supposed to... I don't try... I don't shy away from difficult images. Like, I believe that cards need to have those images that create an emotional response. Because without that, that's like... Mediocre work. Like if you, if I loved every card, then to me that's fairy tales and fantasy, and that doesn't serve me because I need something that will, Abby experience. I want something that makes me cringe, makes me look at the dark side of things. If this comes up in my spread, attention has been received. <laughs> I don't want to look at that anymore. I need to figure out how to flip this and and make a different experience or whatever is going on. So. I don't like this card personally, but I, uh, I'm i never going to let it go. So this is always going to be in here. So I've heard sometimes that some people will just throw out cards they don't like. And to me, that's just like almost sacrilege. <laughs> I mean, you, I, I'm a firm believer and you get to do whatever the hell you want uh, when it comes to your, your reading, your reading style. But, you know, I'm not that way. So this is the tower. Oh, uh, this is heartbreaking. I guess that is a tower moment. Like, if you see the birds, I don't know if birds actually cry, but it does kind of pull on your human experience and make you kind of sad. And you got babies here. So, oh, that's like heartbreaking. See, I mean, but they're necessary. They, 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 they pull on things that must be known, must be heard. The star... The star card has always been a weird one for me. I don't understand the star card very well. I might need to do some more intense work with it because obviously there's something there that I need to understand. That's a good idea. I need to share that with the group. The moon. I just um, posted a new and full moon journal that I created. Why is the text in the photo? Is that standard? 
I don't know. That's odd. So it's like, you know, sometimes the details are weird, but yeah, what else? <laughs> I love that it's a full moon, though. So I guess this could be when, like, you could give more. Yeah, if you're if you're spending the time to intimately know a deck, then I could understand um, maybe making, like, 70 day or 78 or whatever however many day project out of reading the guidebook in addition i run too many businesses honey i don't know if i'll have that time or if i'll make that kind of time that's just the way my life is set right now um i do love that this is the bear or this is the the sun sunflowers my wife loves sunflowers so she would love this card i do have a question like why are there nose pierced <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'll find out the reason if when I read or if I read the book, but it's like, why? You would teach their own. To each their artistic own. Um, transcendence. I have to read what this means. Polar bears. I don't know. This one isn't, doesn't feel obvious to me. The world. Interesting, though, that's a net. Cool. Oh, now we're in the suit. I meant to make this quick because I got to also keep an eye on my time. Excuse me. What time is it? Oh, it's 12.55. 11.55. Okay. Ace of Cups. Cool. Intertwined snakes. Good God. <laughs> what is that? That's like, I don't know. It usually has like this nice feeling to it. This one, not so much. So I'd have, totally have to research that a little bit more. Hmm. Interesting. Four of Cups. Wandering Mind. Hmm. Spilt Regret. Reuniting Waterhole. I feel like it would take very special people to work with this set with. Like, it definitely wouldn't be the super light, kind of frilly, shallow questions. This is like, I need a spiritual healing. <laughs> I like work that's that's deep set. That to me feels meaningful. That to me feels purposeful. Seven of Cups. Right? Yeah. Ooh. Eight of Cups. High door. Oh, yeah, if I remember correctly, this is usually the idea of walking away from something. Um, my teacher used to say abandons successes. All of these cups are on the ground, though, so I wouldn't say it was a success. So maybe it's just like, fuck it, I'm done, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> Nine of cups, the contented pelican. pelican. Why is this kind of in the negative imagery? Hmm, that's odd. Like, this feels like the pot, like, sorry, this feels like the positive, um, you know how when you take a photo and it's the positive version or it's the actual photo that you intend, but then if you develop, if you look at the, the film, you can see the negatives of that image. This feels like a negative of the image, so I'm wondering if that's deliberate. Ten of Cups. Chief Eagle. That's kind of cool. I've been having an affinity of eagles recently. Mother of Crystals. And see, like, another of crystals. Oh, Queen of Cups. Um, I'd much rather see her face without the crystals on it, but that's just me. That's just me. Ooh. I dig that. That kind of has an ancestral feel to it. I love that. Page of Cups. Pentacles. Okay. So usually suits are in order and this one's not, that's fine. or at least in the, the standard order. I guess there's no really right. I love that that's a king snake, I think. The juggling snake. The three wise masters. Okay. Prudent mountain goat. I don't understand that one. That's okay. Five of pentacles, hardships. Oy. See, that's another one of those cards that's kind of hard to immediately swallow. Seeing animals that are emaciated and kind of sad with, you know, assuming vultures, but these look like crows. 
That's kind of hard to stomach, but that card is kind of that way. White scale bowl. Okay. I'll have to read what that one is. Ooh, I love the plain man. Not the plain man, it's the Venus flytraps. Patient Weaver. Interesting. Nine of Pentacles. Okay. Meh. I'm ambivalent when it comes to like the tree of life and I have mentors and teachers who are deep rooted in it and trying to educate me in it. And I'm, I get it. I just don't resonate with it. And that's just me though. I'm a heathen. <laughs> See, this image I feel like could have been so much better without this. Because that face is so much, so much. That it doesn't need, like, this. It, it, the butterflies are great, but it just, maybe that gives her, oh, it's a he. It's a king. I w <laughs> I'm not an art critic, but I'm being one. I kind of like this detail. It's kind of interesting. Okay. I don't understand the jewelry, but you know what else? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Aztec hawkware. Okay. It's interesting kind of blend of things. Ace of Wands. Okay. We like turtles. Five of Wands. Ouch. Six of Wands. B kind of makes you nervous. Like, you appreciate them, you love them, makes you nervous. Maybe that's, for me, the, the way of that card. Seven of Wands, the Determined Otter. Eight of Wands, the Meteor Shower. Nine of Wands, the Darkness Before the Dawn. Hmm, cool. Eek. The Overburdened Beetle. Hmm. Huh. Let's get the Ace of Swords. The Blind Seal. Question, why is there candles in his eyes? Like, maybe I just need to know what the artist's intent and meaning was. So this is that moment when I would definitely research the, the artwork. Um, because now I'm just like, what the hell? What is this? What does this mean? Why? Sorry, I'm relighting my incense because I'm weirdo. There we go. So yeah, I have questions. <laughs> Why? Why? So I just need to educate myself there. Three of Swords. Bleeding Raw Heart. Ouch. Okay. Sacred Space. Did you know that baby rabbits have no smell? Just to keep them safe. Big scorpion, little scorpion. Five of swords. Hmm. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's definitely unfair. Six of swords. Oy. Okay. See, I enjoy this perspective. This is different. This has the depiction of either the bear coming at you or the bear, or like the, I don't know if the bear is sinking or the bear is like diving. Either way, that's a really interesting perspective, especially with the, the air bubbles. I dig that. I dig that. But it's the, this is the imprisoned bear. So maybe it wasn't supposed to be that. Nine of Swords, the Overwhelmed Sea Turtle. Ten of Swords, the Barren Desert. King of Swords, Father of the Night. I don't understand the jewelry. That's just me. And then the negatives, but you know. 
The split ups. Caution. What's the heated, heated, what are these? Okay, so we have more cards. <laughs> I was not anticipating more cards. Jawbone catcher. Okay. Expansion, the shining snake. Sacred heart. Karmic release. And that's the front image. Nature, seed of life. Yep. Sacred fire. I was just thinking of that when I saw the, um, what do you call it? The pine cone in the back. Ooh, I love that. I dig that. The hidden inner strength. The shadow cat. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Because I always feel like cats think of themselves as so much bigger than they actually are. And I love that about them. I love that about them. And this is weird. So this is the hidden wolf masks. Um, that's a good fucking point. I feel like I've done that before. Yeah, hidden myself in the in the masks. What is this? This looks like an ink blot. That's probably the point. It also looks like a vertebrate in a nervous system. I wonder if that's probably also it. Because it could be whatever you want it to be or need it to be. The shaman, the medicine healer. You. You. Teach their own, but you. That word annoys me. The sage. Have a little over here. Oh, hello. Yes. No. Cool. <laughs> okay. So I obviously need um, have a little learning to do so that I can better understand how to work with this deck in particular. But um, that's interesting. I appreciate the maturity of this set. I appreciate um, the nuances, the details. I look forward to seeing how this can be best incorporated. This to me feels like a very fall um, set of cards when you're kind of like recessing reassessing, resetting, and kind of, you know, starting, ooh, shuffles well, um, re, resetting up life for you, you know? Okay, so I just wanted to shuffle to kind of get a feel, let me kind of bet one, how these will work for me. Normally I like to interview first, and I will definitely make sure I get a point of doing that, um, before I go too deep into trying to work with them. This could be complicated to shuffle. Ooh, that worked well. That's, <laughs> that's a brat. <laughs> that's a brat to shuffle. It's all good. I probably would just rifle it. There we go. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Can I pull three cards? Three cards, three cards, three cards. What do you need me to know about you? How about that? Yeah, that's a nice little question. Just to get to understand this deck. What do I need to know about you? Dear, dear sweet new friend. New working friend and partner. I feel like you are the set of cards that you use to dig up shit. You are the set of cards that you use to get to the root of long-standing traumas and troubles and when you're ready to do, yeah, I mean, well, the words were in there, shadow work. You are that set that makes you dig deep. Let me check my time. Okay, I'm still good. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You're going to get me a watch eventually. <laughs> All right, what... So what do I need to know about you, dear sweet, sweet cards? Oh, you are not sweet cards. You are true cards. You are offended by my... almost feel offended for them. Like, we are not little. We are not cute as for puppies. <laughs> Was the idea that I just heard. Cute is for puppies. Definitely. Okay. Three cards. Where do you want me to pull them? Off the top? Okay. Yeah, I'm literally asking my cards the question and seeing what my first feel is. So it just said right off the top. So I'm going to do that. 
I didn't literally say it. That was the feeling I got. So this is the first card. This is the second card. That's the third card. And of course, I'll look at the shadow. So these three cards are what I need to know about this set. The Emperor. <laughs> that makes sense to me. The Queen of Cups. The King of Cups. Interesting. Okay, so for me, just even thinking about this kind of on a high level, I don't intimately know this set yet. So the Emperor to me just has that feeling of like wise wisdom, old wisdom, wise old knowledge, while the Queen of Cups kind of has that uh, slightly head in the clouds kind of feel to her. Um, well, she, her head is, is turned up to the stars, so she's kind of like looking ahead metaphorically kind of what do you what do you call that what do you I mean I usually have words and words are escaping me at the moment because it's getting late but um what do you call when you're like you've cast your eyes to the sky and you immediately feel how small you are that's what that reminds me of but then the king of cups kind of reminds me to you like that energy using that energy that wisdom in a all-knowing way so it's not just left right but it's like this dimension that dimension and the other so it's the 3d it's like the time and the place and the such and such so it's just that's interesting for me to know about this set of cards it feels like a wise old bat <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see if we um how we work together if we work together um and maybe it's just like like i don't like reading or just having looked at it right now it feels respectful three of wands that's cool um i bet we could do some work together but at this moment i don't feel like this is the time for us to get like deep work in um i'm in such run mode that doing shadow work or doing deep soul work seems counterproductive it feels like it would stall moments i'm so too busy then kind of like patting my wounds that i've opened up because they need to heal anyway so it's good it worked but it would interrupt the flow that i've got going so i look forward to doing a deck interview i may make a point of doing that live or at least recording it so that i can share what that process was and what it looks like my goodness. I look forward to integrating you into my process in some way, into my practice in some way. So thank you, cards. I always thank my cards. It's like, I don't even know if it's thanking my cards or just thanking whatever energy it is that decided it was going to hang out with me <laughs> while I was doing this. I'm thanking that. I'm thanking my intuitive insights. I'm thanking whoever, whatever that was willing to work with me in this space and in this place today. So thank you. I don't know if I know how to do this. Well, oops, should I have done like that? Something like that? I don't know, whatever. I'll have to figure out the ribbons later. Um, all right, so I may, may figure out the guidebook. I may. <laughs> it's, that is thick as hell. <laughs> And I'm a reader. I, I, I don't, I'm not put off by large series of texts and fonts and stuff. But I'll definitely keep it around. Because there's a few cards in there that I'm, um, I have questions about. So, yeah, you feel like you are the, you are the, oh, Jesus. You're the set that you pull out when you're trying to figure out why you behave the way you do. Or why you're attracted to that terrible person that you used to, you know, used to date. That's when you pull out that set of cards. Anywho, I need to get off this now because I've got some planning to do before I call it a night. So you all take care. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay sanitized. Bye.